this uh, function of fx is equals to okay, uh, your x from 0 to minus 3 to 0. X is equal, function fx is equal to 0 from minus 3 to 0. And function fx equals to x from 0 to uh, 3. Okay? So as you can see, the, the function is defined from minus 3 to 3. No longer pi is in, is in play. But it doesn't matter because now we can you know, still use our basic formula. So just simple application which you know, is mindless by any standards. Okay, 2 times, what is it going to be? Well, this is going to be defined from minus L to L, right? Minus L to L, which we have seen here is minus 3 to 3. Okay? But remember, this thing over here is going to be equal to L. So when I put the, it's, it's 1 divided by 2L, so make sure I put a 3. Don't put a 6, okay? 6 is 2L. I hope you can see that. 6 is 2L, okay? But L is equal to 3. So for the L over here, put, put in um, 3, okay? Well, actually, this turns out to be 2L, but, but that's, that's beside the point. So anyways, uh, integrate from minus 3 to 3, and I'm going to integrate function fx. Let's just put fx for now, because, f, uh, because function x is defined in two ways. And again, I now can immediately write 1 divided by 6 integrate. i got a 0 over here, so I'm just concerned with integrating from 0 to 3. 0 to 3 of x and dx. And this is going to be equal to 3 divided by 4. Okay? My, uh, minus integration, if I may call it like so. Now, what about am? 1 divided by L. What is L? L is 3. Okay? L is 3. Because it's defined from minus L to L. So L is 3. And then I will integrate from minus 3 to 3 of function fx. Cosine. Remember, what is it? It's n pi x. Right? It's n pi x. So it's n pi x divided by L. L divided by L. So L is 3. And um, dx like so. Okay? And then again, what I can see here is that it doesn't matter what is it from minus 3 to 0 because it's equals to 0. Function fx is equals to 0. So I can just integrate from 0 to 3 dealing with this function over here and, that's, and this becomes an x like so. Okay? Now this turns out not to be minus integration because uh, many students get confused how I'm going to integrate a function like this. Well, it's actually very easy once you get used to it but I'm just going to show it to you now. We need to use uh, integration by parts, right? And a very quick method, okay, because if you were to recognize the cosine function, we will just put the x by itself and we will have to differentiate another function that will give me that function over here, which is the cosine n pi x divided by 3. But that function turns out to be 3 n pi sine n pi x divided by 3. Okay, this is the function that I need to differentiate. Well, very easy. Well, you just think about it. I, 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 it's sine because when I differentiate, I get cosine. That's common sense. But remember, I need to differentiate the one that's inside. So, uh, everything except that x goes out and it will just cancel out with whatever I do here. How I normally think about it is that bring this thing out, okay, and then invert it. Bring this thing out here, okay, and then invert it to get this thing over here. This is a differentiation, differentiation by parts. The reason why we want to do this is that because now we can write 1 divided by 3 and we can uh, bring the x inside here, this whole thing over here is already integrated, just evaluated from 0 to 3, and then I would subtract integrate 0 to 3 and then I will now differentiate the x. Well, that's good because if I differentiate the x, I get 1, right? So I get 1 which is nothing and then now I just have to integrate this thing over here. So this one will go down here, dx. Now, can I integrate that? Yeah, because this is a constant, bring that out and I'm just integrating sine, basic formula, sine becomes minus cosine and the same thing, minus cosine, we need to bring that one out, okay? So this is a basic a short lesson on integration by parts and this is going to be equals to, a n is going to be equal to 3 n squared pi squared n squared pi squared and then we got a cosine n pi take away 1. Okay, so this is what a n is going to be equal to. Simple application of the formulas that I just showed you. And likewise, doing it for b n, okay, which um, you can just go find out. b n is going to be minus 3 n pi cosine n pi. Okay, this is what our b n. So we got our four coefficients right here. So, what is our Fourier series of function fx? Okay, so a0 is like this. Okay. So, what is our Fourier series of function fx? Well, it's going to be a0, which is 3 divided by 4, plus our summation, n equals to 1 from, uh, from 1 to infinity. It's going to be an, which is going to be this thing over here. So, I will write 3 n squared pi squared. Cosine n pi, what do I get again? I get minus 1 uh, to, uh, to the power of n minus 1. Okay? Take subtract 1, and then this one is cosine n pi x divided by 3. Remember, 
the cosine, okay, this one is going to be an. An is going to be this thing over here. So this one I substitute inside here. It just turns out that an has that cosine and pi x inside. But we're integrating that. You see, cosine is integrate function f x and the cosine and pi x. Cosine, the cosine function is further this. But when I put it inside the Fourier series, there's another cosine function over here inside the summation. Just be mindful of that, uh, what's going on. Okay, and the next one is plus bn, which is going to be this one over here, minus 3n pi, and it's going to be a minus 1 to the power of n. Remember what I told you? The cosine n pi comes up a lot in all Fourier calculations. So just, you know, it's good to know that cosine n pi is equal to minus 1 to the power of n. And, but then it's going to be equal to sine and pi x divided by 3. And there we go, that is our Fourier series. Now, looking at it, can we make any um, odd and even cases? Well, let's just take a look, shall we? Okay, what do we have? Now, um, we have if n is even, if n is even, this one's going to be reduced to 0, if I'm correct. However, if n is even, this one's going to be equal to 1. So, because of this function over here, we cannot split into odd and even cases. Odd and even, uh, we must, it must be together. Now, I know that if it's an even case, the cosine function will be eliminated. Yeah, but we still got a sine function. So, be very mindful of these sort of things. You don't want to make a, a mistake. Okay, if this one is, is out, you can immediately consider the odd cases. If it's even, it's minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So, just consider the odd cases. But because of this thing over here, we cannot split it up. So, basically, that is it. Our Fourier series of a function that is defined from minus L to L, in this case, is minus 3 to 3. Okay, and I re-emphasize again that we are very careful to not write this whole thing is, e is equals to function fx. This may not be the case. Okay, remember, we are always seeking a Fourier series, or well, at least for now, a Fourier series of fx. We are always seeking a Fourier series of fx. We are not finding fx is equal to this. fx may be equal to this for certain conditions which we will find in due course, but we are always saying a Fourier series of fx. And yeah, for instance, with fx is this, okay? So, it's a short lesson uh, of changing the variables from uh, minus 3 to 3, okay? Uh, thanks a lot.